Danzig's Evil Bricks is one of my favourite internet stories slash myths, but I've never been able to find a really good description of the entire story. There's plenty of articles out there that'll give you the bits and pieces, but without the full context, it's all kind of meaningless. So with this video, I want to give you Danzig's Evil Bricks explains the entire story documented and preserved for future generations. Let's start off with the man himself. For those of you who don't know, Glenn Danzig is an American singer-songwriter who formed The Misfits, Samhain and Danzig. The most relevant thing to this story, however, is Danzig's personality. Danzig is very spooky and very evil. He's kind of like an older Marilyn Manson, but if Marilyn Manson worked out, had a teaching degree in Jeet Kune Do, and took himself way too seriously. I think it's really just easier for me to show you Danzig than try to explain Danzig. What in your youth led you into music? Uh, I hate everybody. You're a real big uh, Sinead O'Connor fan, I understand, huh? <laughs> Tell me. No. No, you're not? Why not? I don't like bullshit. We hung dead animal heads and limbs and carcasses all over the place. You've never been married, Glenn. No, I'm not an idiot. You, you don't see yourself having kids in the future, do you? No, I don't. Welcome to my book collection. Uh, which bands do you uh, consider bullshit that we're playing here today? Apart from Sinead O'Connor. Most of them. Why? What's wrong with these bands? They're all nice, you know. Sincere bands, according to me. What was wrong with them? You asked me my opinion, not yeah. your opinion. No, no, but I, I want you to explain your <laughs> You opinion. want to hear yourself talk? No. I'll leave. You, no, can, no, you no. can talk to yourself. I want to hear you explain. You got an old school phone. I don't like that new shit. Oh, man. <laughs> There's lots of great will stories in here, all documented, all true. And, um,. There's one in particular that's great where they're looking for this guy who's accused of being a werewolf and he comes out of this clearing shaking a baby in his mouth. That's pretty cool. That was kind of it. Every time I asked Glenn Danzig for the lyrics, he'd send me something different. He would just like rewrite them or something. Either to mess with me or he couldn't, he was trying to make them better or something, I don't know. Even as a little kid in kindergarten, I, like everyone else would be drawing boats and stuff and I'd be drawing monsters and dinosaurs eating people. It's really evil. Yeah, occult roots and Nazism. Every school child should have this book. <laughs> you can learn a lot from this one. Here in this place lies the genie of death. Is that what it is? I thought it was key to your death. Okay. Genie of death. <laughs> What's he? I, I'm not. I'm not. My new belt buckle. There's just various books on death. Anthropology of evil, different societies' views of evil, what their conception of evil is. So yeah, he's a pretty serious guy, potentially one of the darkest and spookiest men to walk the planet. Unfortunately for Danzig, as is always the case with people who take themselves very seriously, he is very often the butt of jokes, like this time he fell on his ass. Or this time he fell on his ass. Or this time he got knocked on his ass. And there was also this picture of him returning from the store with cat litter that made the rounds a few years ago. Although in his defense I have heard that he rescues cats from shelters. Although you know he's only taking the black evil cats and uh, Danzig ain't taking no tabby cat. I know there's lots of Danzig memes out there, but the one that interests us today is the one that concerns his abode. Our story here comes from an IM chat between two guys, one of whom claims to live near Danzig as of time of writing. Dude, Danzig lives next door to me in LA, down the street, and he is the worst neighbor ever. Dude, I have Danzig stories. No shit. Like, an awesome one. Yes, dude. You realize this may be our number one topic at work. We always say, what do you think Danzig is doing right now? Danzig lives in this shithole house next to me in Los Feliz, about 100 yards down the street. His house is super run down, except he's got this crazy jaguar in the backyard. It's a place of evil. So he has this pile of bricks in the front yard, and the house looks like an evil Pixar house. 
So anyways, his neighbor was like, dude, Danzig, you're bringing property values down with these bricks in your yard. And Danzig was pissed. So anyways, back and forth with his neighbor and Danzig. And finally, one day, I see Danzig outside in his front yard and he's hurling bricks into this dumpster and he's screaming, here I am, motherfucker, just cleaning up my fucking bricks, bitch. Just super loud to no one in particular for two hours. It was amazing. Like, I couldn't even think about other things because it was so amazing. Oh my god. Pretty funny story, right? Well, you may be saying, Kukser, this is just text on the internet. Anyone could have written this. This is just fan fiction. Well, there are a few pieces of evidence that give a little bit more credibility to this story. Number one, Danzig really did live in a rundown, creepy ass house in LA. You can see why Danzig chose to live here. Uh, this is exactly the type of place I envision when I think of Danzig's house. Number two, he really does have a Jaguar and he really did keep it parked here. There is even a picture of him cleaning it in his yard, which was captured by Google Street View, bizarrely. Number three, there really was legitimately a giant pile of bricks in his front yard. Legitimately, there is proof of this. Here is photographic evidence. What did Danzig need all these bricks for? Was he planning on building something? Did he just have them lying around in case of emergency? What's with all the bricks, Danzig? Of course, the true purpose of the bricks is probably just too sinister for our feeble minds to comprehend. Thus, the bricks simply became known as Danzig's evil bricks. The house and the bricks soon became a site of pilgrimage for fans of Danzig's music. And guess what? Eventually, the bricks were removed, so the story did have some pretty accurate information in there. Now, did Danzig really stand out in the front yard throwing all these bricks in a skip, howling like a madman at the indignity of being forced to take time out of his busy schedule of blood sucking. Unless Danzig himself comments, we'll probably never know. But it is plausible. And there's even more to this story because in 2017, Danzig eventually got fed up of people coming to his house looking for his evil bricks and he put the house up for sale for $1.2 million. What's important to note here is he put the house up for sale as is. That means Danzig is not clearing it out. You get it as is. So people pretended to be interested in buying the house just to get a look inside. And from this, we have pictures of the inside of Danzig's house. And it is something. Okay, the Looney Tunes characters surprise me here. I know Danzig is really into comic books, but I didn't think this would really be his style. Moving on from that, look at the fucking state of this place. Why is the floor so dirty? Did he pick his couch up off the street? You ever see people leave like a bunch of their furniture outside with a sign that says, please take, because they're too lazy and too cheap to take it to the dump? That's where I thought he got this at first, but even that shit is in better condition than this. Uh, fucking look at it. The characters on display here are really something else. I don't know. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. It seems reasonable to suggest that maybe he was dating someone with a particular affinity for Disney and all that. I don't know. Who knows? But look at the fucking floor. Just, <laughs> just look at it. He was selling this for 1.2 million. Here's some comic book action figures, and yeah, I believe most of these are his. He is a big fan of comic books, he even has his own comic book line. But really, how did the floor end up like this? I like never clean my floor, and well I wouldn't say it's clean, but it's not that. Oh, here's some reading material. Welcome to my book collection. Yeah, this isn't at all surprising. There's the skull. Look at that stool, it's covered in paint. Wait a minute, hold on now. I think I'm starting to, I think I'm starting to understand what happened to the floor. Did this motherfucker seriously paint the ceiling and not put any sheets down to cover anything? I, th I think that's it. That's got to be it, right? Interesting choice in cereal. Well, actually, 
No, maybe not. I think this might give some credence to my theory that there is someone else living in this house. Because you've got the dark and spooky cereal, that's for Don's egg, right? And then you've got the bright pink cereal for his love interest. This theory, admittedly, has a few holes in it, though. Like, number one, two people diametrically opposed in their taste probably wouldn't be interested in each other. And number two, you could not convince a single other person for love nor money to join you in living in this squalor. Last picture, <laughs> the floor. It looks like he's got a PS1 over there in the corner and his bed, he doesn't even have a bed frame. It's just a mattress on the floor. With a floor like this, surely you wouldn't want to sleep so close to it, but all right. There is also a video, the quality of which is inexplicable for something recorded in 2017. Like, how did you even find something to record this poorly? What is all this shit? <laughs> Comic books? Oh, is this the room of VHS you were referring to? Mm. This is a closet. A lot of Disney shit in this house. You guys. We're upstairs right now. Oh my god. Here's a beautiful bedroom. There's cobwebs everywhere. Stunning. God. Cool bedroom. Regardless, you can just about make out the big landmarks from the photos, so it's definitely the same house. So there we go, the extended version of Danzig's Evil Bricks, a behind the scene insight into the life of the enigmatic Glenn Danzig. There was a crowdfunding event to buy the house and turn it into some sort of punk rock mecca, they even promised to bring back the bricks, but I don't think they ever got it, and as far as I'm aware, the house is no longer listed, I can't find it anyway. Was it sold? Did Danzig just give up on trying to trick somebody into pay 1.2 million for this? Was there ever an explanation as to why the house was in such a state of disrepair? All answers we just don't have yet. Uh, we just have to learn to be happy with the story we have. In fact, I enjoyed it so much that I made a shirt. You can buy this shirt and all the other shirts that I have made in the link in the description. My ultimate goal is for somebody to take a picture with Danzig while wearing this shirt. I'd fucking love to see his reaction. Failing that, I would be happy to see you alone in one of my shirts. If you have such a picture, please tweet it to me over on my Twitter account. And with that, I must bid thee a very evil and very spooky farewell.